Temperature is important for many physiological functions. Animals rely on many chemical reactions to survive and function during their life. Chemical reactions are influenced very much by the temperatures that they're exposed to. Fishes are no exception to any other animal and will have evolved to the range of temperatures that they inhabit in the wild, with some being able to alter their internal temperature to a degree. Temperature plays a role in many of the chemical reactions important to life, such as muscle contractions, digestion, metabolism, the nervous system and oxygen uptake. When looking at fishes, we've got to think about pelicothermy. These are organisms that cannot regulate their own body temperature, um, but will do with behaviour, so it, technically they can. Traditionally, they're thought of as um, ectothermic, but they can actually be warmer than the environment around them by altering it using these behavioural methods. They generally, it depends on the actual environment and a whole role of factors to what temperature they are. Some fishes, though, are like tuna, heterothermic, due to the muscles, they maintain a higher temperature in these regions. An important factor when it comes to temperature is that temperature is related to oxygen saturation. So the higher the temperature, the lower the oxygen saturation. So it's more or less that. So as temperature increases, oxygen saturation will decrease. Oh. I don't know why the red's so bad. <laughs> so, and also salinity plays a role here. The higher the salinity, the lower the oxygen saturation. So this is important to visualise and think about. These will be important in the fish's adaptations as some will be evolved to cope with lower oxygen saturation than others. Oxygen, as we know, plays an important part in a process known as respiration, aerobic respiration precisely. Respiration being the process of energy production within, um, well, within organisms. Although anaerobic respiration does and can occur in fishes, many of the waste products are toxic. Some fishes are better adapted to this than others, such as goldfish um, when... That I, um, when ponds freeze over, they have a better, better adaptation to those lower oxygen saturations or well, just declining oxygen saturations. So when we talk about range of tolerance and survivability at different environmental um, conditions, not just that, but um, sort of adaptability, it's easier to visualise it with a graph. So on the x-axis, I've got temperature in centigrade. Um, and survivability but this could be percentage of individuals still alive and this graph will vary on how long the fish has been exposed to that temperature um so you would get different curves so it will probably if it's exposed for longer and it becomes less um, of a sudden shock you might get acclimatization and this will vary it could also vary, say, in the extent. This is a tad extreme. <laughs> There's probably not many fish that can survive that high, but it's entirely made up. But So it will depend on how long the fish has been exposed to that temperature because they can acclimatise, and this will vary um, a lot. Also, depending on the age of the fish, the already stressed state of the fish, um, salinity, as I've mentioned, um, and then you've got this ideal range. So here it is on this species. And it might be able to, it doesn't, it's not going to be equal at either end. But this is the ideal range. So that's the ideal range that the fish is going to be feeding and that peak physiological function. And there will be some temperature differences that um, it can withstand. Then this, oh, it's gone from red to black. Oh, there. So this will be your range of tolerance, what the fish can deal with. Um, obviously, this isn't the best way of drawing it. But there's going to be um, a good deal of survivability. 
but it is pushing physiological function. You could almost grade, I guess, the ideal conditions maybe to be where they are at peak. But some of these ranges are going to be within the aspects of seasonality. But it just makes it easier to look at range of tolerance in that sort of manner. This sort of area is known as the tolerance zone as well. Um, but if that helps visualise how temperature is important and, well, yeah, anyway. So when we're looking at temperature and environmental variable that we can alter within the aquarium, we really talk about stress. And I've got two definitions here. Stress, a state produced by an environmental or other factor which extends the adaptive responses of an animal beyond the normal range or disturbs normal functioning, such as that to an extent at which either see either the case, either case the chances of survival are significantly significantly reduced. The next uh, definition would be I think it fits together quite well like as a follow on it's a physiological cascade of events that occurs when an organism is attempting to resist death or re-establish homeostatic norms in the face of insult but homeostatic being sort of maintaining stability within uh physiology shock can result in acclimatization so when we're looking at this really thinking about the time scale. If the fish is suddenly exposed to cold, well, if it's exposed to cold temperatures, will it acclimatise or develop chronic stress, which is basically leading to death? And this will depend on the time and how far from in the range of tolerance or from the range of tolerance the temperature is. The extent on both sides does depend on how far and how long the fish the age of the fish and other factors enzymes particularly function in a narrow uh, temperature range physiologically so these are kind of an interesting um, aspect to look at because they're important in many of the physiological um, processes digestion um, particularly is one that is really interesting to me and it has this narrow range outside that range they can decrease in function or fail to function in the lower and the higher range so these are massively important in shock and if we look at um, cortisol increases when temperatures are not ideal so let's look a little bit at too cold. If the water's too cold, as mentioned previously, it will affect neuronal, hormonal, osmoregularity and many other physiological processes, including actually digestion, hence the enzymes. Many hobbyists have noticed during, experience, during periods of extreme cold, fish are not willing to eat or have issues once eaten, likely due to effect of low temperatures on digestion, they don't, the bacteria aren't functioning at op optimum conditions and neither is the enzymes and the gut in general. A study on the Amur sleeper um, con uh, by Kavanova in 2018 concluded that the brain of the fish accumulated free amino acids and other protein parts rich in phosphorus just to maintain the cell membrane function. The liver also accumulated sulfur-rich compounds. Low temperatures reduce blood supply, glu um, reduce blood supply, um, also reduce glucose and cholesterol levels. Oxidative stress can occur damaging proteins and DNA. Delayed growth and tissue damage such as the gills, spleen, liver, pancreas, kidney, kidneys and gills can occur. Too hot on the other hand works kind of in the opposite way um, but and might have biological, different biological pathways but will still cause physiological stress and it could be to the same extent as the fish is well put under stress really. 
High temperatures do decrease metabolic function, but increase uh, blood glucose and lactate levels. These fishes also have a reduced tolerance to osmotic stress and differences in salinity, which is particularly interesting given that it's often recommended to go to high temperatures outside of the ideal range of certain fishes to treat a to treat diseases and salinity also increases oxygen uptake um so it might not be ideal to do so outside of the ideal range of temperatures a disease susceptibility increases and reduces the immune function response to pathogens and this is important at both low and high but it's worth noting that it's just this physiological stress and it's important to think about. So seasonality. Many fishes experience a range of temperatures during um, the year. Um, the earth isn't like there's nowhere that's going to be exactly the same temperature all year round. And you might even get slight diurnal changes, but whether it affects the water is another thing altogether. So many fishes experience seasons and uh, I'm able to manage a range of temperatures. But this will depend on uh, the range and the response will also differ between different fishes and also age groups, as I've said before. So research fishes, some fishes deal with harsh and extreme temperature ranges, resulting in periods where physiological function changes and stress occurs whereas others might have very narrow ranges that they inhabit in the world and might not deal with the largest amount of change if you think maybe more towards the equator where they don't get the massive swings in temperature like we do um in temperate um temperate zones Stress is not always bad as well. If we replicate these functions, there's likely to be many benefits, including increasing lifespan as a potential one, and also maybe susceptibility to certain diseases. Just keep it within the natural range. Many fishes breed in response to seasonal changes, and it replicates natural cycles of offering a level of enrichment. If you research where the fish is found and look at water temperatures, you could find a range that the fish will inhabit and then potentially replicate it. It could also end up saving money um, as you might be going down to lower temperatures. There are plenty of fishes we see kept outside their likely range of tolerance or what they'd ever experience in the world. And... I would account some of this to actually influence the lifespan of these fishes. They might breed, but it doesn't mean they're going to be at optimum and live as long or they're going to be exposed to more stress. Take Corydoras, who often... There's many different species of Corydoras that prefer those cooler temperatures and unheated, sort of one that will range in seasonal temperatures. Many snakeheads, chana, and also I think some parachana benefit from seasonal changes and lower temperatures than the typical predatory tank. Even within what we look at as temperate, tropical and um, cold water, there are ranges within this. So uh, take, you've got like sturgeon who don't really want to be above, I'd even say 18 degrees centigrade, they struggle really badly with oxygen uptake but then you've also got uh, fishes that prefer maybe 18 to 25 which puts them maybe at temperate but crosses over then just because it's tropical doesn't mean it's gonna be fine at 25 there's many fishes such as many laurel cars that prefer 28 or above there's a number of different cichlids found at much warmer temperatures in like i think 40s plus uh, such as Danakila in Africa. So really researching the fish is important. And I assume if... Yeah, anyway. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please uh, like, subscribe, comment, whatever. Thank you.